morning from a very uh, dark dinner in clay this morning. The overnight stop was fab. Slept really, really well. We're up nice and early this morning um, because the tide is out and we wanted to hit the beach before anybody else was around. So it might be a bit dark if you can't see me very well. And uh, I will just show you what the doggies are doing on the beach. Right, so Nick is over there, just pulling into a parking space on the car park. We've just pulled into, um, I think it's just like a little shop, James Pringle, into his car park. Because what I wanted to come and see was this, the longest place name in Wales. So here we are at the station. Right, so let's have a go at saying it. Llanfaia, Paul Gwyngill, Gorth Gareth, and Sirio Gogogoch. I probably said that completely wrong, but there we go, we've had a bash. But yes, I really wanted to come and see this sign, this station is so famous. Um, I'll tell you in a minute what it means in English. I've got it on my phone somewhere. But this is the little station. And you always, I, I've always wanted to come here, I don't know why, but I just have. And it's a really cute little station, little Welsh station. Just pretty normal around the other side, but with a very large sign. Um, I think, from what I read, um, it was about in 1865 that they almost concocted the name as a bit of a gimmick. Um, I don't know for what reason, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was all about. But I'll give you the English version in a minute. But here we are. If you do want to come, there's plenty of room in the car park, so long as you try and make it outside of shopping hours big enough entrance to get us in and one more quick look at the sign there it is so Nick do you reckon you can have a go at saying it yes I can yes go on then Flamberis <laughs> Clangenis <laughs> Rosselli and Llanethli Gog 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 I think that's a bit wrong but hey listen I'll tell you what it means in English, right? Okay. So it means St. Mary's Church in the hollow of White Hazel near a rapid whirlpool and the church of St. Tassilio near the Red Cave. <laughs> Look, I just show you the girls. They're being really good this morning. They're all just lying here fast asleep because after their nice run on the beach. So now we are off to... Look at that, there's we... a word there. I know. How many letters is in that word? Oh, I, I don't actually know how many letters. You have to count it up. But um, James Pringle Weavers of Anglesey. And it says underneath. Yeah, it's, 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 got, it's, it's got the, the English version there as well, yeah. which I've just read to you. 
I found that. So where are we going next? Ne next so we are next. now. We are off to uh, Newborough Forest, uh, which is, I believe, a little bit like maybe Pembrey, that sort of thing, where you've got a bit of woodland and a bit of beach, where we can hopefully park up for most of the day. Um, and get the girls onto the beach, get the girls into the woodland a little bit. The last place we were at was a little bit busy, um, really. So um, it is Sunday today, though. So it is Sunday. Yeah, uh, can't you, help that. You've just got to go with it. But yeah. uh, we're going to go there, and then later on we'll be moving on to our campsite, which is a, mo a caravan and motorhome club um, certified location site. Um, and so we're going to have a look at that. But first off, I think we'll be heading off to the beach and the woodland. Right, here we are at Newborough Warren. Um, lovely place, lots of trees, just driven through the forest. But you can see, poor olders, we've got to park sideways because there's no motorhome spaces. Um, yeah, there's just no provision at all for any larger vehicles. So hopefully we won't annoy too many people. We've tried to come out of the way and there are lots of parking spaces. So hopefully that will be fine. So I can see that down there is the entrance to the beach and then there's lots of signs and lots of different walks so I'm going to go and take a look. This is the car parking area. It's quite busy today considering that it's a January day. Everybody's wrapped up and warm. This is where all your information is. So it'll tell you all about the beach and the water quality standards. So there's lots of information saying what you can and you can't do. Um, beware of the tides, kite surfers, no fires, lots of information here about all the walking trails, there's loads of walks to do, lots of information to tell you where to go and all about the uh, different things that you can see. So this forest is made up of Corsican pine trees and they were all planted um, between 1947 and 1965 and I think originally they planted them um, for timber but also to try and stop the erosion of the sand dunes because it's such a, a specific area of scientific interest I guess so we're going to go off and have a little walk down here um, the car park you pay on the way out so it's a number recognition number plate recognition thing um, tells you how long the walks are going to take and how far they are. Absolutely lovely to come and spend the day down here in the summertime, for picnics and benches and quite a lot of history as well with the, the island. Apparently this forest is home to the last 500 red squirrels in Wales. That's quite sad really, isn't it? There's only 500 left, um, but the trails look as though they're quite good, you know, for disabled access as well. Um, don't think there's anywhere that you can't get to along these trails. Obviously getting down to the beach through the sand dunes might be a bit of a mission. Um, if you've got prams or anybody that may be in wheelchairs, but the trails itself going through the forest look all, the main trails anyway, look quite easily accessible. Um, and there's lots of markers as well, so I think it'd be quite easy to find your way around. Well, I decided to walk through the forest rather than down the beach towards the island because it's um, so freezing cold and windy. But here we are, approaching the island. So this little bit of beach here is called 
This little beach here is called Sandwin Beach and this is the access to the island and you can quite clearly see how you can end up getting cut off here and I most certainly wouldn't want to go over there at the moment. You can see a few people have gone over but like you can see the water comes right across and this gets completely cut off. So apparently um, in Welsh Llandwyn means the Church of St Dwynwen and that's the story of St Dwynwen who is the patron saint of lovers in Wales and she's associated with the island so I think it's a bit of a pil pilgrimage area sorry my lips are so cold they're getting stuck together now but there is a church over there which is dedicated to her I believe and it is absolutely stunning I'd love to go over there but I don't think I'm going to take the risk of going over because it looks like people are going back and the place is going to get completely cut off and I can't imagine that uh, a January day would be the ideal place to be stuck over there there is a message board over there as well the information board that tells you all about it I would love to get over there but I haven't checked the times Right, here's one last look at Newborough Beach before I go and defrost. I gotta say, I feel like Audrey off National Lampoon's Christmas vacation when she went up to the forest to get a Christmas tree and her eyelids froze together. That's how cold it feels on Anglesey at the moment. So I am gonna go back and defrost and I hope you've enjoyed this little trip to the beach. Right, Molly and I are having a little cuddle while um Eva and Nick have gone out for a walk because, oh, are you alright Mal? Because it's freezing up there, I'm defrosting, but Nick has gone out with Eva now separately. We've decided to take them all separately over here because there are absolutely thousands of dogs around. So we thought it might be a bit much taking three together and we can't take two because we can't leave one behind. So they're all going separately. So I'm just having a bit of a warm up and a chill out. And um, Nick's gone off to freeze himself to death again with Eva the Diva. And Lyra is just waiting over there somewhere. Oh, Molly's in the way again. Hey, Mal. You being a good girl? She's such a cutie pie. She's looking for her dad out the window. And Lyra is being very patient and just waiting for her turn. You okay, Lyra? You okay? I think you're a bit sleepy, aren't you? Hey, you a bit sleepy? Sleepy, Lyra? She won't be sleepy when uh, Nick comes back and realises it's her turn and she's going out. So it's quite nice, actually, because it's so cold. You just need a bit of time in the van and a bit of time out. So we've kind of been taking it in turns. So seeing as I'm sat here in the van um, while Nick and Eva have gone out, um, I just thought I would share with you the um, the history of the island because um, it's actually quite interesting and I couldn't really remember it when I was all down there. I remembered a bit of it, but not all of it. So apparently, Ernest Lanthorn Island is home to the ruins of an ancient church that is dedicated to Dwynwen, who is the patron saint of lovers in Wales. So in Welsh... Llandwyn means a church, the church of St. Dwynwen. And the story of St. Dwynwen, patron saint of lovers of Wales, is associated with the island. So Dwynwen was the daughter of a 5th century king. She is said to have retreated to Llandwyn um, after falling in love, and that's where she set up a religious enclosure. So over the years, the beautiful island has become a popular pilgrimage and today people celebrate St Dwyn Wednesday on the 25th of January so it's kind of like the Welsh Valentine's Day. There's a lot more you can read about it online but yeah the Welsh Valentine's Day and I guess that's where it all started about Welsh love spoons as well um, that they give them for St Dwyn Wednesday which is the 25th of January Welsh St Valentine's Day.
Hi and welcome to uh, day five of our tour of Gwynedd and the Isle of Anglesey and to my end of day brief where I will just give you a little rundown on where we started and where we've gone to and the miles etc uh, etc et of the journey. So last night we stopped over at uh, the little pull-ins on the way to Carnarvon Airport at a place called Dinas Dinkley. Uh, we left there this morning and we travelled on to uh, Newborough Forest. It's like I said yesterday, I think it's a bit like Pembrey, um, but uh, it, with just one central car park, whereas Pembrey is spread out um, uh, all around the site really. Um, so we, we spent all day there took the girls out onto the beach, uh, into the woodlands for some walks and we have came here now, which is only about 10 minutes from Newra Forest to, it's a caravan and motorhome club uh, certified location and it's called Brambles. Um, so we are going to be here for one night before we move on tomorrow. Um, the distance that we travelled today from um, uh, in a steam clay to, to the forest or to where we are now is 30.6 miles, 22 miles per gallon, 17 miles per hour was the average speed, again very slow because of the lanes and that took us uh, one hour and 22 minutes. We did have a stop off today at the um, uh, town with the longest name known to mankind. Uh, we had a photo taken, we took the photo of the van underneath the sign by the train station. Um, so really that's it for today, we're all a bit a bit tired really, it's, we've all been outside in the fresh air all day today. So for a treat for myself tonight I've got um, some lovely liver and uh, onions which I brought with me with a nice bit of onion gravy, do some nice mashed potato. Uh, as always thanks for watching and we will see you again uh, next time.